What's going on, mi gente? Louis the Boilerman here. Guys, today I'm going to show you what it is to do a tune-up on an oil burner, and specifically a Riello oil burner. Guys, these are very common here in the New York area of the Northeast. So whenever you come across a Riello burner, today I'm going to take you the step-by-step -step in the journey of what it is to do an oil burner tune-up. All right, guys, first things first, whenever you're doing a tune-up, you have to shut off the shut-off valve or the oil supply feed coming from the oil tank. In this case, you guys can see it's called the Firematic valve, and the Firematic valve has a, um, a, a spring built in that keeps the valve in the open or closed position. So you wanna make sure it's off. Right now it's off. Next thing is you wanna change the oil filter. You guys can see that the oil filter is filthy. Guys, there's three gaskets. There's the main gasket, which you see in the oil canister, and there's the main gasket on the top, which is where the bolt goes to. There is one more gasket, which is a small gasket, usually for the bleeder. Uh, we do use it, we don't use it that often, but you always wanna make sure that you replace it if it's leaking, you guys can see. <clears throat> you guys can see how filthy this oil filter is. You guys wanna do this at least once a year, minimum. Whenever you're dealing with oil, it's best and highly recommended that whenever you have a, an oil boiler in your home, that you don't wanna go low, meaning, Making, go, making the tank go dry. Why is that? Because remember guys, this is an oil burner. It's a pump that sucks fuel and burns it. It doesn't know if it's water in the tank. It doesn't know if it's shit in the tank. It doesn't know if it's anything in the tank. It just knows how to suck. And what happens is, is whenever the oil is very low, it starts sticking up, or sucking up, I should say, all the sludge from the bottom of the tank. All right, so you wanna change that gasket. You guys can see, that's the main gasket and the canister. And then you also want to change the gasket, which is coming out on the top. You're going to see the little red gasket that goes on the bolt. That's it. That's the gasket right there. And that's the one that's going to go on the bolt. You want to make sure you change that. There is one more, the little one you see on the top of the, um, on the red cap, which you're going to see right now. But guys, usually that doesn't leak. Usually you want to change the main or the main um, gasket, which is the main gasket on the canister and the uh, gasket on top of the bolt. All right guys, the, the size wrench you use, uh, which is most common, is 5 8 So the wrench that, you, uh, that we see here in the video, it's a 5 8 opening box wrench. So if you have a box wrench or a ratchet set, I recommend you getting a different size. You wanna get standard and metric, but this, on this particular burner, um, you use both. You use metric and you use standard. But on the oil canister, it's 5 8 Whenever you're changing out the, the filter, make sure you tighten it, but you don't want to make it He-Man tight. I mean, as long as it's snug, because the gasket is going to do the actual job for you and making sure there's no oil leaks. <clears throat> Next step is you want to replace the strainer inside the oil pump. So on the Riello burner, you have four screws or four bolts you want to remove. Usually you need an Allen key, which you guys can see. Once you remove those four screws, you should be able to take off the cap and get access to the actual filter strainer or oil pump strainer. <coughs> Again, guys, whenever you're changing out the strainer on the oil pump, you also wanna make sure that when you take it off, make sure it comes off easy to cap. Sometimes they do get rusted in. Also, you also wanna change the gasket. You guys gonna see momentarily, when you change out the gasket for the Riello oil pump, it's a, it looks like an O-ring. You want to make sure that you replace that because usually throughout the years or course of time, they swell up and they just go bad. It's not leaking now, but if you don't have one, it's better that you don't change it at the moment. But if you do have one, you have to replace it. Why? Because they're going to leak. So you always want to replace the filter as well as the filter strainer on the oil pump. All right, guys, we're about to remove the cap. You guys can see, we have one more screw left. <clears throat> All right, guys, so that's the actual cap right there. I wanna show you guys the actual strainer, or the filter, should say. That's the actual filter right there. Look how filthy that is. 
Yeah, guys, you want to replace that. That thing's called an O-ring, or that's the actual gasket right there where he's putting his finger on. Also, that's the actual strainer. The strainer is very filthy, as you guys can see. So you want to replace that. Guys, it's very common to see a dirty strainer, especially it hasn't been done within a year or so. So you definitely want to change it. You want to make sure your actual oil burner is burning efficiently, it's burning clean, and you don't want any hiccups or headaches, especially not in the middle of the winter time when you need some heat and hot water. That's for sure. All right, guys, so you guys can see that the strainer is not that bad of a condition. So typically, many times you can actually clean it. I would tell you to advise you to clean it with a brush. Make sure that it's clear. The gasket is in pretty decent shape so we can reuse and salvage the gasket. But sometimes when you see the gasket is in poor shape, you want to replace it. In this case, we're not going to replace it because <clears throat> it's in pretty decent shape. But we want to clean it. We want to show you and demonstrate you guys that it can be clean. Sometimes you run, you're running low on parts uh, or side of the season for whatever reason and you need um, an actual strainer and you don't have one. Well, the next big thing is to clean it. So you guys can see right there, it's nice and clean. Make sure that oil will get through the filter. And of course, place it right back where it belongs in the oil pump. But you also want to clean out the actual oil pump for any debris, any, any small particles. Once you do that, then you want to put the actual cap and make sure that the gasket is in good shape. It's inside the actual cap. All right, guys. Just that easy, you put it back exactly how it was. You get your screws, put them on one by one. There's a total of four screws. And then you want to tighten everything up with an Allen key. Again, guys, just a friendly reminder, whenever you're tightening up the actual screws, you do not want to over tighten the actual screws because remember, the oil pump housing is made out of aluminum. It does not take much for it to break. So guys, you want to make sure you tighten it, make sure it's snug but you don't have to make it um, that tight, meaning you don't have to, what we say, he-man tight. You don't have to over tighten the screws, because believe you, me, they will break, they will strip, and they will make your life impossible. And at that point, you're gonna need a new oil pump. So, so a little FYI, do not over tighten the screws. All right, guys, next step is we want to replace the nozzle. So right now, this is how you have to remove the actual cover to get access to the draw assembly, which is where the nozzle is connected to. You guys can see, you definitely want to take out a Phillips screwdriver and remove the screw that's connecting it to the chass chassis or the housing of the oil burner. Then you have two screws on the side, which is actually holding the cover in place. One on the top, one on the bottom. So once you remove these two screws on the cover on the left side, which you guys can see right now, and the third screw, which is actually on the chassis, then you actually remove the actual cover and get access of the draw assembly. Sometimes you do have to remove the actual uh, relay. So that little set screw on the left side of the relay, you wanna loosen that up, remove the actual relay box, and then you have access to remove that cover. And now you're able to remove the actual draw assembly. However, you do have to disconnect the actual little copper oil line, which is connected to the oil pump. So you do have to remove that and disconnect that first in order to remove the actual draw assembly. But whenever you're taking out anything off the actual yellow burner, you wanna use an open-end box wrench or an adjustable. I recommend an adjustable because you have different sort of sizes and just one wrench. However, if you do wanna use an open box wrench, make sure it's metric because this yellow burner comes from Italy. Everything overseas is metric. Here in the United States, we use standard. So make sure you have a set of wrenches that are standard as well as metric. All right, now that the actual oil line is disconnected, now we're getting ready to remove the actual draw assembly. And as soon as the draw assembly is, um, is disconnected, we're able to remove it from the actual housing or the chassis, or in this case, from the blast tube. Guys, we're not right now we're removing the draw assembly from the blast tube. You guys can see right now, that's what's called a draw assembly. That's where the magic happens. So right now we want to make sure that we clean her up. So we want to clean up the retention ring, which is on the front, and then we also want to remove the nozzle to replace the nozzle. Usually what goes bad is actually the, the nozzle. But guys, you always want to make sure to do a physical inspection on the draw assembly and just make sure that your electrics are good, make sure the, the retention ring 
it's actual clean. And you guys can see in the right now on the nozzle that the nozzle is actually dirty, so we want to replace that. That on the back of that nozzle is also a little strainer, a little filter. So guys, you always want to make sure you want to clean that if you have to recycle it or you have to reuse the actual oil burner nozzle. We we really <clears throat> we highly recommend that you replace them. However, sometimes you don't have the right size nozzle, and if you can still use it and salvage it, it's best that you clean it. All right, guys, if you guys can see on the nozzle, on the cover, it says one gallon 60B. So that's telling you the gallons and usage per hour. That's what it's rated for, so it's one gallon an hour and it's 60 degrees. That's the size of the nozzle. Same thing, guys, nozzles are made from brass usually, so you wanna make sure that when you tighten it, do not over tighten it. Remember, the actual drawer assembly made from brass. It doesn't take much to strip. So you definitely wanna make sure you tighten it, make sure it's snug, it doesn't leak, but you also do want to make sure that it's not over tightened. All right, guys, whenever you're doing a retention ring cleaning, again, you can use an abrasive uh, brush or you can use a wire brush, or in this case, you can use some sandpaper. It doesn't matter, as long as you remove all the carbon and it's making sure that everything is nice and clean. All right, Hente, once you finish up doing your, your cleaning on your drawer assembly, now you wanna put everything back in place. Remember, there's two screws on top and one on the bottom, meaning the actual chassis of the oil burner is connected to the drawer assembly, and then you got two screws, one on the top, one on the bottom, to screw in the actual cover of the drawer assembly. Okay, mi gente, it's officially a wrap, and that's how you do an oil burner tune-up. Guys, I hope you liked the video. So guys, most important, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that bell button, smash that bell button, leave a comment below. We would love to hear your comments and hear what you thought about the video. Until next time, stay tuned. Wepa!